Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Carolina Conversation. I'm your host. And today we have a legend with us. Uh, you know, he hails from West Germany. He came to the University of North Carolina in 1989. He was also the senior captain of the 1993 National Championship team. He is one of the greatest European players to play at the University of North Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the Henrik Rodo. Thanks a lot, Shaman. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Thank you for taking the time, Henrik, for uh, to being on the Carolina conversation. Um, you know, we got lucky having you stateside right now um, as you're coaching uh, for Turk Telecom and and Ankara, Turkey. Um, so, so how are those things going for you, man? How's that? Well, we uh, I, I got a, the the offer mid December, um, oh. and uh, you know jumped right on it. Uh, uh, it's a great opportunity. It's a very good league. You've been over there, so you know how how uh, many fans are there, how much yes. money is involved. It's it's really high level. Um, yes. Super excited to be in 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 that league and to be able to to maybe turn a program around. Um, we've done pretty well since I got there, and, uh, and when I came in originally, they they told me I had to take uh, the coaching staff over that was there and they were really supportive. Everyone's really, really been very helpful. Uh, then one of the guys had to leave and they had a chance to bring somebody in. So I brought Brian Reese in and that was really cool. So I have a little bit of, uh, 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 you know, home cooking it together there. And, and uh, it's been a, a great experience. It's very challenging. It's a league, you know, it's very tough. Every game yes. is challenging. And, and uh, you know, sports with COVID and injuries has been uh, challenging anyway. So. But I'm, I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity, and I, I love it over there. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Ankara is a, is a great city. Uh, it is the capital of Turkey. Uh, I've been there uh, m many times. Uh, it's a it's a very cultural city. Uh, I think I was there one time. They were having, uh, what would you call it, peaceful protest. Uh, okay. So, so it, it it was it was really really informative, really informative, and and I, and I like the city. Um, but not only are you the, the head coach of, of, of Turk Telecom, you're also the head coach of the German national team as well. So how is it being the head I, coach? I, I, fin I finished, I finished uh -huh. the German national team up last summer on a, uh -huh. on a great note. We made it to the Olympics. Uh, um, uh, actually, Brian was also on, on our pre-Olympic uh, coaching staff. Uh, right. um, that was also cool. Yeah, it was a very big surprise for Germany to make it to the Olympics. Uh, after that, I decided to terminate that that uh, situation. Um, been been that coach for a long time. Uh, felt like I had done enough. Um, right. It was looking for a new opportunity. Uh, I got one now, so I'm extremely excited. I cannot do both. It's very hard to do both. Oh, uh, gotcha. Gotcha. You get to put energy in both. It's really really hard. Um, I was very grateful to play with a lot of great players with the German national team. Now I'm, I have a good team, so I, I can't complain. It's all good. Yeah. Now. There, there aren't many that get an opportunity to coach their country's team. Uh, I think Coach Williams has done it on the collegiate level. Larry Brown has done it on the professional level and collegiate level. Um, and that's all that we have in our cabinet. <laughs> so, um, well, Coach how, Smith, of course, uh, made it to yeah, the, you know, Smith, won the Olympics yeah, Coach Smith. Uh, yeah. um, back in the days. Uh, yeah, yeah I, it's, it's been an, an incredible honor to – have yes. played in the 1992 Olympics and now uh, have coached our, our, our team in, in the Tokyo Olympics. A uh, uh, very humbling experience to be in, involved in those both both of these situations uh, has been really great. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. That's, you know, that's that's something like that's that's something to be noted. And, and, and should I wish one day I could coach this Olympic team? <laughs> Never know. It's a little harder to coach the U.S. team than the German team, let me put it that way. But uh, it's a lot harder to make it to the Olympics with the German team. That's that's for sure. You know, once you yeah. get the coach of the U.S. team, you you bought the medal. So uh, with us, it's just making it. It's awesome. You know, so yeah. it's, it's a little different, but I uh, appreciate it a lot. Yeah, yeah. It shows your greatness, Eric. It shows your greatness, baby. It shows your well, thank greatness. Thank you. Thank you so much. So... Let's rewind the hands of time here. Let's rewind the hands of times and, and, and tell us, um, because your story is going to be different than the majority of the people that I've had on here that have been student athletes at the University of North Carolina. Um, 
especially with you coming from Germany, you know. In 1989, how was the decision and what made a young Henry Rodel decide to come to the University of North Carolina? Well, it really started in 1986. Um, I decided, or, and my family would supported me in that to to take a year as an exchange student in high school uh, on a on a Fulbright scholarship. And uh, so I uh, um, was lucky to choose, or have somebody choose the the Chapel Hill High School for me. And uh, so I was an exchange student in high school in uh, 1986, um, and uh, won a state state title with with uh, Chapel Hill High School, and and you know uh, uh, got MVP of the state. And so you know, that's when when that all started. Wow! And I okay. fell in love with uh, with North Carolina. Actually, it, it may have started even a year before that when uh, Coach Roy Williams uh, uh, was uh, uh, doing a, a, a basketball camp in uh, Germany with the German youth nas national team. And he was that's the first time I've ever heard of Carolina basketball uh, back in the days, VHS tapes. Uh, right. <laughs> we were watching Michael Jordan the first time. I fell in love with the university, fell in love with him. And, and uh, it's, it, it, you know, then I had an opportunity to be in a high school uh, environment right next to the university. That was great. And then I had a great time there and that's when they started recruiting me. Wow. Okay. Okay. That now, now it, it's coming together a little bit. It may, it's coming <laughs> okay. together a little bit. Okay. Okay. And so um, there it was, it started in, like you said, in 86 as an exchange student, they began recruiting you and things like that. So, um, did you do your senior year in Chapel Hill High School as well, or did you go back to Germany? Um, you know, I went, how was I, that? I went back to Germany for two years um, and, and uh, finished high school over there. That's why I actually came in and, and was a, a 20 year old uh, freshman. Um, but, uh, you know, I got a lot of ex uh, international experience, played on the junior national team back then, you know, with the great uh, uh, Yugoslavian generation of uh yes. Vats and coach and 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 raja and and those guys and and so i've had a lot of good experience with that uh coach smith came to visit me in germany and in italy when we're playing tournament got the over there so you know they tried their thing but also uh uh I fell in love here with with uh, a lady from from chapel hill so you know it's <laughs> easy recruiting me <laughs> right 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 okay Okay, uh, well, well, at least well, at least we know that Coach Smith he he didn't have everything to do with it. Just you know, it was something bigger. Yeah, he didn't have everything. <laughs> okay, good. So you know, after choosing not to play professionally and choosing to come to the University of North Carolina, um, though you had been here at, at, um, for a time as an exchange student, um, how was it for you when you actually got to campus? You know, how how was that environment? I, it was, uh, uh, I think in the beginning, everyone is a little bit overwhelmed. And, and for me, coming from a different country, and it was so big, and, and, and everyone was a McDonald's All American. It's, it's like you, <laughs> you, you know, it's like you were something special before, and then you come in there, and then there's a load of talent. Uh, then, uh, 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 but, you know, it, I, I think that the way we worked made it easy for me to, to adjust um it was very structured and and you just really focused on what we were doing i loved the school uh ended up uh uh you know being a biology major and doing well in school and set myself up for a, a maybe a you know possible uh, uh med school um mm -hmm. situation i really loved the idea of being a student athlete i loved both of it loved campus um got back together with my then girlfriend and married her in my junior year. So, you know, and when we won the championship in my senior year, I, I can't, you know, yeah. what, can I, what else can I say? This, this was an incredible uh, uh, experience for me. And, and I'm very grateful to be here. Yeah. Sto storybook, storybook. Um, but let's, let, let's talk and evaluate, uh, elaborate a little bit, Eric, on, on being in a professional environment, you know, like you, you know, Alba Berlin, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, like you, you, you talked about Dino Raja and 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 that great Yugoslavian class of players and being around those guys, um, and having the chance to practice with them. 
um, because this is something that I, 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 I think about myself um, because we have a home in Valencia and I'm thinking about maybe spending some years in Valencia with my, my children and having them in that environment and then having the opportunity to come back to college, come and play college basketball here in the States. Was there any benefits for you being around the professional environment and practicing and playing with that level of player and then coming and playing against the, you know, the, like you referred to earlier, the McDonald's All-American. Were there any benefits in that that you felt um, that could be beneficial to, to someone else? Well, I think the, the uh, European School of Basketball is a little bit different. Um, it kind of has to be in some ways, but uh, also uh, the setting is different. We get to play with the men's basketball, men's teams very, very early. Um, I think it brings a different physicality, but also a, a different mindset. People that are more experienced, they know how to play and you learn from them every day. Uh, being on many uh, of the, our national teams early, uh, I think I started being on the men's national team when I was 17. So, you know, then I had guys that are 32 year olds 32 years old and already been professionals for 10 years and they they just the way that they act and, and the, the knowledge of basketball that you get there that really helped me I think then coming over to a collegiate uh, situation and uh, bringing also different aspects of basketball back in the days so it's not as global obviously uh, right. and and we, we did work differently over there um, I think that the uh, uh, all of Europe has developed much, much more since then, but uh, especially the Yugoslavian school back then was already very, very far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, good. And so now you're here at the University of North Carolina as a, as a freshman. Um, and, you know, you have, you know, some, some pretty good teammates um, there with the, the likes of uh, who you had, uh, Rick Fox. You had, uh, I think Hubert was there. Um, maybe King. King was uh, there. Yeah. Yep, King. You know how was how how was that environment? Because when when you talk about when you talk was, um, no, I think Jr. may have been gone at that time. It, it was first year gone. Yes, Scott Williams. Yep, Scott. There, um, yeah, me year. Um, a big, I think that 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 team somewhat underperformed my freshman year. Uh, we had some talent, but it just didn't click as much as it could have. Uh, right. I had a signature win against Oklahoma in the in the uh, you know beating the number one seat in in and but then didn't advance much further. Um, uh -huh. Beat Duke twice in that year, so you know we were good. <laughs> <laughs> right, no but, question. But you know, our, our, I think our best teams were my my sophomore and senior year, obviously when we we went to Final Four and then won it in '93. Um, the chemistry on that team, especially in 93, is something that I, I've felt like even now in, in, in coaching, that's something I aim for all the times. And I tell people that you, the upside of being together and, and actually like having that kind of chemistry will get you into a different level of competition. And uh, um, so it was a great experience to be able to be on a, on a championship team and know what it takes. Um, Great lessons of life, but great lessons for basketball also. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting that you talk about that chemistry because when we had Brian Reese on as uh, a guest, he alluded to, you know, the chemistry, but he also alluded to the leadership of yourself and George Lynch of that national championship team. Um, being your senior year, um, Henry, uh, having that team, did you did you understand uh, or did you think that you guys could win the national championship? I think that early on we understood that we were very talented. Uh, um, we had been to the Final Four two years before that and felt like uh, um, uh, disappointed at the end that we didn't win it. I think right. in the beginning, you're so ecstatic to make it to the Final Four. And then when you don't win, uh, you understand that it, that's what it's all about. And I think we were much wiser than two years later. And a lot of that group was still there, you know, our, our yep. young guys. And then being seniors, uh, um, 
I think that that uh, this is somewhat getting lost in 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 in, in uh, uh, modern college that you know yes. guys stay there for four years and they know what it takes and they, they you know and they can provide leadership to younger players with all the transfers and and all that it's it's getting much more difficult to to uh, uh, get that leadership and also that that uh, continuity that that you really need and that that was a, a part of our our greatness really that we knew what was going on and, and, you know, um, it was not like coach never surprised us, but you know, it's like, we trusted him even more. So it's like, I think my senior year when we were down 10, five minutes to go, we felt like we were up because yes. we were going to win, you know, it's, right. and, uh, timeouts were like, you know, we just knew that, that it, it was going to work. All we had to do was execute. And, and I, that gets lost when you're only there for a short time, you know, and, right. And so I, I think I was lucky to be with, with with the group of guys that really bought into it. That's one part, but also I think the setting was perfect for for that group. And uh, we, I think we did what it took, right, to right. to to, uh, to 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 win. And and, I, and like I said, it's it, it, to me, it's, it's it's still one of the teams that I always refer to as. That's uh, may, may have been not the most talented team, but that team was the most together and believed the more in, in the principles of that time. And then we'll, that's what made us strong. Yes, yes, yes. Now, being a head coach, being a successful head coach that you've been over the years uh, um, in Germany from, you know, from the domestic teams to your national team and now being asked to, to coach one of the, the big, bigger teams in Europe in Turk Telecom, are there any specifics or are there any things that you have taken from coach smith that you apply to your coaching that allows you to be successful i think there's there's no winning without discipline everyone has to have their own way to, to enforce that um i'm not a screamer but i also believe that if you if you if you let things go too loose it's not going to work um i think that the the heart smart and together is something that's like engraved in all of our minds and souls and and that's something we bring we bring everywhere uh, all of right. that team i think all of you, you i mean all, everyone that's been through the program starts believing in those things and you know you play hard and you play smart and you be together you have a chance to win and i think that's that's something that's uh, that's that's very much part of my personality and and, and it has become a big part of my coaching yeah 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 before we move on, let me tell you guys a little bit about our partners over at Bet River Sportsbook. If you haven't signed up for Bet Rivers yet, now is the time because they are offering a $250 match bonus for your first deposit. But what sets them apart is that they require just one playthrough to turn your bonus into cash money. With their rush pay instant approval, withdrawing your winnings is safer, it's more secure, and it's more reliable. Now that basketball season is tipping off, Get in on the action at betrivers.com today or by downloading the BetRivers iOS app. You must be 21 years or older. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. And while I got you here, let's talk about the Field of 68 Media Network, where college basketball matters most all year round. This is a digital media and podcast network that we've been building over the course of the last year. We have shows hosted by some of your favorite players covering the program that they love the most. A.J. Guyton hosts the House of Hoosier. Eric Devendorf covers Syracuse on the scorer's table. Dan Dickow hosts the Gonzaga Bulldog broadcast. We have Florida's Patrick Young and Duke's Andre Dawkins and North Carolina's Shimon Williams and Michigan's Stu Douglas and Illinois' Deion Thomas. The list goes on and on and on. We have more than 30 shows right now. So hit the links below and check them all out. And while you're at it, make sure that you go check out the Field of Twelve. Media Network, your home for college football. Um, you know, because some of us are striving to to walk in the shoes that you you're walking in now, uh, with being a successful head coach one day, and uh, you know, someone like yourself who is who has played, you know, at, at high levels. Um, you know, I made this I made this statement to uh, Brian Reese when we had him on uh, as well. Um, your your champ national championship game, um, you know. There were eight McDonald's All-Americans starting that game, and one of the best European players in college basketball started that game, and Jimmy King. You look at that level. 
<laughs> you look at that level of talent and players on the floor at one time, that's today's all-star game, NBA all-star game. You know what I mean? And uh, the one thing that's, you know, that's different about today's game as opposed to when you guys play, you, you have that level of, of, of players and that talent, but the competitive factor as, as opposed to performing, uh, you know, just that type of mindset to, to go out there and compete against those individuals. Um, you know, are you experiencing that um, in professional basketball play? I do think that uh, uh, every player that's at that level uh, is very competitive. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it's it's in a way uh, basketball on a professional level is kind of kind of weird in a way that you need to have stats to get a contract, right? Right. But if you don't win, then you also don't get a contract. So you might <laughs> uh, uh, might have to buy into not great stats, but winning more. So uh, that's that's a, an interesting concept that you have to deal with every day in in professional basketball or professional sports, really. Yes. Um, but I think that that uh, uh, even though all these guys are competitive and are working to get a good contract, they they love winning, you know, and, mm -hmm. and uh, um, they buy into these things. Uh, you know, uh, I haven't really met guys that don't care if you really like if you really want them to 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 get into it. And they appreciate that, too. Yeah. Like, like our group that we have now in Ankara is talented, but, you know, they, they buy into wanting to win and doing things to do so. Um, and if you, if, you, if you get into their minds and into their hearts and change that sum to that goal, uh, you can reach, I think it's the same everywhere. You can do it. Yeah. Uh, that yes. makes the difference to me. It does, it does. It's interesting that you say those things because for me, um, playing in the NBA and then playing in Europe um, and having the choice, um, you know, to go, you know, go back to the NBA, and then making the choice to come back to Europe. The one thing that I really appreciated about Europe um, at the time, not knowing how much it would change my mind mentally about the game and, and allow me to learn a different style of basketball that could be very beneficial in my growth. What I did appreciate about Europe, it reminded me more of college than the NBA. And when I said that, guys were more concerned about winning as opposed to uh, statistical uh, uh, relevancy. And that's what I really loved. Uh, you know, being a basketball player, loving the game, I only cared about winning. You know, <laughs> when, you, when you're playing the NBA, you know, you had people that had incentivized contracts that if I scored so many points or I had so many rebounds, and, you know, it, it sure. was never about the wins. And when I got to Europe, that's the one thing that it really just, it just, took me over i love that everybody cared about winning because the bonuses was a, were most bonuses were associated with winning winning yeah with sure. winning <laughs> and so um it's interesting that 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 you make that comment um you know you know what impact does the individual have on winning can you can you look beyond his stats and say ah it's something about this individual, every team that he plays on and everything that he does, it just affects winning. Um, you know, so it's interesting. It's interesting. Um, I think uh, you're, you're really on, on key there. Um, obviously, you're a scorer when, when you were in college. Everywhere you went, you scored, right? And uh, in Europe, it, if, if you didn't score, they wouldn't keep you. So, right. but at the same time, uh, if you were then shooting every time just to score, you would lose. They would also not keep you. Right. Uh, it's extremely competitive. Uh, you have to be extremely tough minded. Not everybody can do this. And for you to have done this for so many years in such uh, on such great teams speaks for you and for your toughness. Because uh, 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 people always ask me, so why 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 are there no soft and, and tough uh, soft foreigners on on the teams? I said, well, they send them home after three months. <laughs> you know, if you don't perform right. every night, then you you're just going to sit home. Um, right. And uh, so if you if you can stay there for a while on that kind of level, then you are actually helping teams to win. You're doing your job and you're performing every night. And, 
for that, it's 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 tough because, I mean, we we uh, even as coaches right now, I have a contract until the end of the year. We make it to right. the playoffs, I, I get extended. If we don't, right. um, I I don't have a contract. It's not like I have a five year deal now with the team or something and right. can build something that we need to win right away. Right. And right. every night, and if you lose three or four in a row, they find somebody else. <laughs> no question. You know, and, and that goes for 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 coaches the same as players your contracts I, I'm, I'm not sure what I, I looked at it but I, I'm not sure if you ever played on a team two years in a row did you yeah yeah I have I have but I understand exactly what you're saying I mean you, you know you well especially in Europe you you may have a contract for for three years but like you said before if you don't perform the correct way or find that line of performing and then uh, affecting the winning, then ah, who knows? <laughs> well, actually, you might get fired, and you might have to run for your money. That's for sure. That's one thing. But there aren't—I don't know. There. Are, I mean, I, in my career in in Berlin, I had two three-year contracts, and that's almost unprecedented. You know, most right. most contracts in Europe are one or two years. Yeah. So every year you have to like you have to prove that you're still worthy and. For the club that you're in or for any other club so you know every time it's it's, it's very competitive and and yeah. uh, uh so every year it's 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 tough and so true. it is about winning um yeah you have to find a niche to do that and and like i said before you to be there for so long that that speaks for you yeah now that you say that i understand your question yeah i had one contract like that when i came back from los angeles to valencia i had a three-year deal and i played in okay. valencia for two years so wow. yeah yeah that's it, why you call it, that home <laughs> yeah that's no just very tough to find a place valencia is a, a high level team uh they have got great one of the greatest youth programs in europe uh incredible facilities i spent a couple of days there um they their owner just built like a 20 million dollar facility it's yes. incredible so if you want to have your kids have a good environment and if they are into basketball they'll be just fine uh, I yeah. think it's a beautiful city. Um, I think the people w will, will appreciate you anyways. But if you've been there for longer, they appreciate you even, even more. It's like, right. Especially in, in Spain, basketball is huge. So, you know, they still, I'm, I'm sure you're still recognized on the street. That's just how it goes, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's some great information, Eric. Great information. And so with that being said, um, this is the question that I ask all my participants. And it's a, it's a, for some, it's a, it's a difficult question to answer. So you, you get a little time to think about this. You get a little time to think about this. When it's all said and done, like when people, you know, talk about the great teams and they get to that 1993 banner right there and they talk about those captains and they, they bring up Henry Rodel right there and it's Henry Rodel. What do you want people to know and to say about Henrik Rodel? Well, I, I, I want them to say that he was a great teammate uh, and he was all, all into passionate about the goals that the teams had and uh, has great relationships with his teammates still with a lot of them. You know, I'm actually, mm -hmm. you know, obviously working with Brian right now. So uh, that group of guys meant a lot to us back then and it still does now yeah that's awesome well henrik i'm, I'm gonna tell you this um and you may not know this but uh hold you in high regard man because you you're one of the individual one of very few people that actually came to the university of north carolina um with the european background and uh being you know an individual that has lived in europe and being outside my culture I understand how difficult it can be just to be accepted in the culture within itself. Um, um, and it's bigger than basketball, but also being able to, to, to make your mark on such a prestigious institution um, and, and lead them to the national championship. Um, but more importantly, you set a standard that another gentleman from Germany chose to come to the University of North Carolina that uh, that, uh, you know, yes. it's like like my, my brother, you know, he's my brother, you know, Adamola Okalash, you know, he, you know, he, he talked about how influential you were in him 
coming to the University of North Carolina. And, um, you know, a lot of who Shimon Williams is and a lot of the things that I've been able to accomplish as an individual and a teammate was predicated on that gentleman and his sacrifice. And so with you being the person that you are and the decision that you made, you, you impacted my life, not even knowing that you would do that. And, um, and another thing that I, I hold you in high regard for is that you exemplify Coach Smith. Um, and I say that because here it is, um, 20 plus years from you being at the University of North Carolina and completing you know, your, your obligations to the institution. You hired Brian Reese to be on your staff in German national team and in Ankara, Turkey. And that is something that Coach Smith would have wanted you to do. That's something that he implored us to do. And it is so great to see you carrying on the things that he taught us. And man, I, I can't thank you enough for the example that you are. And uh, God permit, hopefully one day, I have the opportunity to reciprocate that, but I, I, it, it is, it is heart filling and very appreciative to watch you continue to carry our great coach legacy in by not what you say, but the things that you do. And I want to say, thank you, man. I want to say, thank you. You know, it's, thank it's big, you. Wow. Well, I appreciate time. you, Shaman. That's really touching. Thanks a lot. I appreciate all of that. Um, big time. Uh, I appreciate you. Thanks a lot. Appreciate that. That's big time here. That's big time. But, um, you know, I want to also, man, say again, I want to thank you for taking the time to uh, to uh, be on the Carolina conversation. Um, it's important. Like I said, it's important that our Carolina family get a chance to to give you your roses, but also uh, get a chance to to follow you and support you, um, you know, in, in, and understand, you know, maybe. You know, hopefully everybody feels the same way that I do. But since this is my show, I can tell you and, and show my appreciation myself. And That's um, awesome. you, you just you just an outstanding individual, man. And uh, and it's it's not like it's something new. Like I said, you know, for Adamola to, to follow you and believe in everything that you did and want to walk in your footsteps and to, you know, for me to, you know, to have him as a teammate, to you know, to travel to Berlin and see it myself and, and interact, you know, man, it just, it just, it's just, it's, it's life change. It's life change. And so. Appreciate it, brother. Thanks a yeah, lot. Man, so. so ladies and gentlemen, those who are watching, let's please give the Hendrick Roller another hand. Thanks a lot, Shaman. Man, Hendrick, man, Glad to be thanks, on your man. show. Man, thank thanks you. for doing this. No, man, thank you. You, you, it's, I appreciate you. You wouldn't know. I appreciate you. And so for those who are watching, uh, when you're not supporting the Carolina Tar, Tar Heels, please make sure you support the Old Dominion women's basketball team led by Delisha Mitten Jones. Um, the ladies are now 19 and five in conference. Um, and Delisha Milton Jones has just been in, um, inducted into the Women's Hall of Fame, Basketball Hall of Fame. And so, um, you know, we appreciate your support and uh, thank you for listening. Thanks, Jamon. Nah, you, thank you, Henry. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you. Did you guys make it to the game last night? We did. Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, awesome being there. The, the game was terrible um, until the end, you know, but I mean, they found a way to push the buttons. They finally got to play hard. It was a little bit too late, but uh, um, there was some spirit in the team that was that was clear to see. Um, yeah. It was also clear to see that they cannot consistently perform all the time. Uh, there's it's just a it, it's a different environment I'm gonna tell you a lot of it has to do with what I said earlier is 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 uh, they don't have a chance to to be in a program for longer and have good leadership and if you if you bring guys in like what well, have six or eight new guys it's tough to have that it, and and uh, the problem is how much is he going to benefit from this year or next year it's going to have to bring in another six or eight because so many guys will leave or transfer or you know the world's changed there in, in, in college basketball and, and it's not good for us 
because that's we're taught differently right and the lessons right. that we 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 bring and that we we both learned from our coaches um are kind of getting lost because we don't have the time to 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 express them and to engrave them in these you know four years with coach smith will change your life right <laughs> you know and uh one year with hubert will give you a huge chance of understanding what it's about but it's not enough right but it, you know it, it, it's much better to have more time i think i, I watched hubert in practice uh he's a great guy obviously we all know that I, yeah. he's done all the right things they do the right things and like i said all he needs is some a little time but uh, the problem remains that how much of the team will be left and how much time does he have to install the the, the principles that we know work and we know we want to have and we want to see on the court every year every every day it's very hard right. very yeah. hard yeah um you know i've in the past three years uh before i took this job in july and so before i took this job in july i was back in in, in south carolina and at that point in time um i've i've had two pros two guys that were top five picks um as well as i've had four guys that you know top 50 in america right now and what you said before i think it i think it is difficult to a certain extent Henry. um but you know i, I think also you have to learn how to adapt adapt and when i say adapt adapt doesn't mean that you compromise who you are uh, adapted means finding, finding the way to, to inform, and sometimes to inform. What has benefited me a great deal, um, you know, I, I I had some kids that were autistic as well, and having those kids that were autistic, you have to find different ways or mechanisms to, to get them to do the things that you you need them to do, and, um. You know, just my thought process, um, they're still kids. Like you said before, they're kids. And so when you're talking about kids, it's a decision to be made. Do you change yourself to meet the kid where they are? Or do you try to get the kid to meet you where you are? And I have the thought process, since I'm an adult with more experience and I've encountered a lot more life than them, then I'm probably more equipped to alter the way that I do things or the way that I teach it to allow me to reach that individual. For sure. Now, the difference is you're dealing with a team. So can you alter yourself for 13 different kids? I, you know, that's up to the individual. But I think that if you're capable of meeting those kids where they are or finding out what's important to them, I think that you can have a great deal of success. And, um, and, and just recruiting in college, you know, um, I, I found it, you know, like my wife came to me, she said, why are you buying all these tennis shoes? And I was like, well, it's not like I like tennis shoes like that. It's what these kids like. You know what I mean? Okay. That's good stuff there. Yeah. So I put on these sneakers that they like. And so when they see me, unbeknownst to, you know, not even talking about my career, what I've done, they like that I got on the same things that they feel that are important. That's very and good so, stuff. Yeah. yeah. So so they have a conversation for you. Well, Coach, those, those nice. Now, <laughs> for us, here, for us, it's the most, it's the, it, it, it's the most superficial thing ever. For us, it's superficial. But for them, it's everything. And so, guess what? Now, I'm allowed, or I'm capable of getting an, an opportunity to have that conversation. I can have a conversation with you where if I went in with hard bottoms on, <laughs> and it looked at me, you know what I mean? <laughs> they look at me and be like. He, he'll get it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. you know, just just those things that are so superficial to us, unfortunately for our, you know, for our future, for, for those kids, it's so important to them. 
And when kids figure out that you understand what's important to them, then they're more inclined to listen. I think it's it's what you're saying is, uh, uh, and that's universal. If you if if the if the player if that's the kind of coach you are, because in Europe, not all the coaches are like that. Obviously, you know that. You right. know they 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 don't all show compassion or or that they care. But I do think that's what you're saying is is also part of my path and how I fi- try to find a, an upside in in a relationship with a player and then that he understands that when I yell at him and want him to go this way, you know, that, that that's because I, I care, you know, and I think that's what you're saying. You care for the guy and you're showing it in, 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 you know, wearing sneakers, but in in all all other ways. And I think that opens doors uh, in a way that, 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 that uh, you can't do if you, if you, if you're not compassionate and and start caring and, and trying to understand. So you're trying to, uh, I mean, obviously, it's it's uh, and that's the fun part about coaching. There's never uh, um, you learn, you learn every year, but it's not like okay, my national team had this, you know, we 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 run this stuff, and uh, so I'm gonna put it on the Ankara team, and it's gonna work. It just doesn't. It's every year, right. and in co- in college, obviously, same now with everything changing. But even if you have the same group and the same guys, it, it's still a different team and it's a different year. And you have to adjust and every time it's it's something new. That's the great thing about coaching experience. I do feel is extremely important, but mostly for me also just to to stay calm because, uh, you know, bad things happen and, and, and right. you, know, you just got to you're 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 on on emergency alert every day. 24 yeah. hours. He's hurt. Get this guy's got COVID. This guy got this. You know, he can't come here today. And, you know, when you have a full squad, whenever. <laughs> right. You know, right. so you that's all the time. You try to figure out the best way for the whole thing. That's the, it's very, very complex. And only guys that have done head coaching understand that how much pressure there is, how much you feel responsible for every one of those 13 individuals that you are coaching. Right. Uh, you have to adjust to who you are. But to, at the same time, they also have to, you have to set some, 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 uh, 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 like, this is the way how we do things. Yeah, and you yes. try to form an identity that yes. comes from you and that can't come from them so you know right. it's, it's, it goes different ways uh i see where you where you're at and i think that's going to work a lot and and also obviously where you come from and you have the right ways to go you know they'll follow then when you when you show that you care yeah 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 that's awesome man <laughs> hey man i did to get you back here stateside <laughs> hey man anytime you want to come over and visit uh, i am I, I was just about to say that man i'm I, I, god permit man i'm i'm I, if, if 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 it works i'd like to come and visit and and, and sit with you and 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 pick your brain a, a little bit anytime you know? man uh you got my number now um yes if you're around chapel hill and I've, i'm there let's let's do some let's do dinner lunch or something you know or, yeah or, or drink some chai you know, it's <laughs> yeah. And, no uh, 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 I, I, it's been a, a great experience to be part of this Carolina family and and seeing now and you know having Brian with me just been a great experience for me just to because uh, uh, it just it, it it that's what we're that's what we're taught and like you said that that Coach Smith liked that he's smiling yes. down on all of us to do this you know and doing yeah. it the right way so it's it's uh, it's very important to me. Uh, it's great to meet you, man. If if you have any time ever, you're around, and and then let's let's do some stuff together and pick our brains. It'd be great. No, no question, no question, man. Thank you so much, Henry. Thank you so much. Hey, and if you wanna, if you wanna, uh, you know, take a little vacation, you'll be. Y'all wanna shoot over to Valencia? You know, y'all more than welcome, man. I'm, I'm right, hey, I'm right down, right down. Tell me beach, when man. you are living there. That is one heck of a place, man. That's it's awesome. I've been played there like two or three times. I visited because I'm. One of my German players was there, and wow, it's a beautiful city. Like I said, I looked at all the facilities; they are insane about basketball. It's 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 really really a cool city. I, yeah. I you know, uh, you you'll be great there. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm thinking about it, man. So right now we just you know we go visit in the summertime and stay for about two three weeks and stuff like that. And uh, my wife wants me to rent it out. I hadn't rented it out. <laughs> Oh, like rip my stuff out. So, like I said, if y'all want to just go vacation, I'm right down on the beach, man. Y'all more than well. Anytime. That sounds awesome. Thanks. I appreciate yeah. you, man. Thanks a lot. Okay. Man. All right. Have a good one, man. Thank you again. You too.
All right. Appreciate you. Talk soon. All right. All right.